Hi, welcome to the Corner of Knit and Tea, episode 261. My name is Laura. I'm also known as Fluffy K on Ravelry, Fluffy Kira on Instagram and Twitter. I blog over at the corner of knitandtea.com, and that's where this show and every episode show notes will be. I have an Etsy shop where I sell my hand spun yarns, and we have a Ravelry group called the Corner of Knit and Tea. Hi, how are you? It is Monday, January 13th. And uh, it is finally a little sunny and warmer out. We have had some crazy weather in the US in the last several days. Um, we personally had temperatures, um, we were up to 62 last Thursday, and then we dropped Friday and Saturday. It was in the teens over the weekend and we had snow. We ended up not getting that much snow, just a couple inches. Um, and so I was able to take pictures of finished objects in the snow today, um, but the sun is out now. It is 40 degrees and the snow is quickly melting. So um, it's the Midwest, sit and stay a while and the weather will change. So because it was snowy this weekend and they were predicting Stormageddon on Saturday, we actually stayed home and I got lots of crafting done. Um, I only have a couple projects to share with you this time um, because the bulk of the knitting was on one project. Um, but I have some things to share with you, uh, what's going next on my needles, um, and I guess that's about it. I don't know that this one's going to be super long, um, but we'll start with that. I hope that you have had a wonderful week slash weekend and uh, that you're busy creating. If this is your first time joining us, welcome. If you are a returning viewer, welcome back. Thanks for joining me again today. So normally I start out the show with a little bit of tea and today is no exception. Today I am drinking um, creme caramel from the tea house. Please pardon the Ziploc bag, but the bag has sprung a leak and I am trying to preserve as much of the tea as I can. Um, this is uh, a tea that I got. Um, tea house is in Covent Gardens in London and I picked this tea up when I was there almost exactly a year ago. Um, it'll be a year on like the 24th of January, so not too far from now. Um, and it is delicious. Um, and I have pleasant memories of that day. I took the uh, tube over there and wandered around and found my tea shop. So I am drinking it in a mug that I picked up, I think, at one of our local Renaissance festivals. Um, it's from uh, Potter in California. And um, I am just going to enjoy this because I love my crumb caramel. And that is delicious and warm and I'm loving it. I just want to sit here and hold the mug in my hands because it's so nice and cozy. Um, I am wearing today, this is, oh goodness, I will have to remember. Um, I think it's the Polyphora Cardigan and it is knit in Miss Babs Yowza in I think the colorway Black Tulipa. It was one of my Nanny Swaymo sweaters um, and it gets a ton of use. It could stand to be gleanered. It is a raglan um, long cardigan, just simple, and then it's an open front and it's got um, a big uh, section of ribbing all around. So it's just cozy and comfy and perfect for staying indoors today. So let's talk about what I've knit. The biggest thing that I have finished is the Dotted Rays sample that I was working up in the Zen Yarn Garden uh, Luxe Cake. That is an oversized 150 gram cake of superwash merino, cashmere, and nylon. It is absolutely luxurious. It is 750 yards to the cake. Um, and I chose, I am working this as a sample for the Zen Yarn Garden booth. Um, if you are going to Vogue Knitting Live in New York this weekend, they will be there. So you can check out the Lux Cakes. One Lux Cake is enough to do the small size of Dotted Rays, which is a pattern by Stephen West. It is a paid for pattern. Um, and it is a shawl that is a crescent shaped shawl and it is worked in short row sections as you can tell um, by the way things grow. And um, so here's the story. The small version of the shawl in fingering weight calls for 720 yards and the Lux Cakes are 750 yards. And so um, you should easily be able to get a small shawl out of a cake. And um, I did and I got to um, this section here with the eyelet holes, this is the end of the small section, and what I should have done is gone straight to the I-cord bind-off, but I was still in the dark purple and I kind of wanted to get back to the hot pink section, so I went ahead and knit one extra section beyond the small, um, and I almost ran out of yarn. 
So I didn't actually complete the final section um, because the final, the um, end of the shawl calls for you to finish the eyelet row and then do the eye cord bind off. And I actually cut the eyelet row and return row because I was afraid I would run out of yarn. And I think I brought the leftovers with me. I might possibly, you know, they don't see it here. I must have, it, it may have rolled away. Um, I might possibly have had enough to do those last two, but I'm not even sure that I would have. I just had a couple grams left over. Um, so it was smart-ish doing what I did. So it is um, not quite the full pattern. Um, well, not quite a full pattern repeat past the small size. So this is what I've got and it is beautiful. I took some photos of it outside today in the snow and in various places and this one is stunning. The colorway is called Razzle Dazzle and I like to believe that Stephen West would have liked that. So this is Razzle Dazzle which is a uh, dotted rays in Zen Yarn Garden. And I'm just going to hold on to this. Um, I have one more sample knit for them, which I will talk to you about in just a minute. Um, and then this will go back to them, the, the two will go back to them together. Um, so that is uh, what I finished for this week. And that was quite a bit of knitting. I cast this on, on I believe the 30th of January and finished it on the 10th. Um, so that was like 10, 11 days worth of knitting, um, lots of knitting uh, and a really nice pattern. I really like this one, although the rows at the end are very, very long. So beware if you do it. Um, I did my previous one in hand spun singles and I'm not sure that I won't do another one because it is a delightful squishy garter stitch knit and um, garter stitch is my favorite. So let's talk about what else is on my needles this week. Um, I did knit some more chicken feathers. I did not bring them to show you because they look the same as all the others, um, but I am still working on those. And then the other knit that I concentrated some time on um, this week was Roxy's socks. And I finished the first sock. Um, this is just a plain vanilla sock um, set up to her foot. I'm doing um, 52 stitches in the round, which is a little bit big for her, but I want her to have room to grow into them. And then um, her mom measured her foot for me, so I just knit till the appropriate foot length. I did do a heel flap and gusset, and it occurs to me that I could have done something different so my stripe order wasn't interrupted, um, but I don't care that much about that. This is a Knitterly Things Vesper self-striping sock yarn, I believe, based on what I'm feeling. This is the 100% Superwash Merino base. This is not one of her newer bases with nylon, um, and it is a five striper. And so I finished the first sock, and then um, I had a car appointment where I needed new tires this week been a very expensive week, let me tell you. Um, in terms of adulting, uh, my car needed new tires. It actually needs more new work, but I went ahead and put it off because I couldn't afford to do it all at once. Um, then the treadmill that my husband has been using to train for all his runs broke. Um, and of course, he can't run outside in this weather, so we needed to order a new treadmill. Um, and then his cell phone stopped working. So then we went and got him a new cell phone. So it's been a crazy expensive week. Adulting is the best. Anyway, I sat at the car dealer, or not at the dealership, I sat at the mechanic for, um, or at the tire store for a few hours on Friday. And so I finished that first sock and I got pretty far through the second sock. Um, my hope is actually that I will finish this sock this evening um, and then uh, I'll have to move on to doing a set for miles. Um, again, just plain vanilla sock. They won't match entirely because I was slightly off in my striping, but they're not bad. They're going to be pretty close. Um, they are like one stripe off. So um, hopefully she won't mind that too much. Um, and so I've got, well, let's see where I started here. So that's one... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten stripes before I started the shaping. So I have six more stripes and then shaping. So, and I believe I am just about done um, with the heel gusset. Um, I'm just about back to my stitches. So that shouldn't take me too long. Um, and then I just need to knit a pair for miles. And I believe I have enough left to get another shorty small set of socks out of this. And if not, um, maybe I'll find some contrasting color for some contrasting uh, heels and toes. So we'll see how that goes. Um, and maybe I may be knitting his toe up um, because I may have to um, divide the yarn and see what I have left. So we'll see. If not, I will find some other yarn for him in the stash. It's not that I don't have any yarn. It was just that I was trying to use up something that was already caked. So those are Miss Roxy's socks. 
So that is what has been on my needles this week, which means it is time for something new. And wouldn't you know it, just about the time that I, where's the other skein? Was it? There it is. Um, just about the time that I finished up the Dotted Rays, a box of yarn arrived in my house, ready to work into a new sample. Um, the new sample is going to be um, a DK weight shawl. It is called Jody's Shawl, or I think it's just called Jody. It's by Hohi Locatelli, and she designed it for Jody, who is one half of the Grocery Girls. Um, and it is a fairly simple um, garter stitch shawl in, in three skeins of DK weight in um, something of a fade. It doesn't have to be an actual gradient fade, but in three colors, um, and it is mostly garter stitch which with some lace detailing towards the edging. Um, I have not printed out the pattern yet, so I don't have it to show you, but I will bring you and show you a picture next week. And um, what we're basing it around is uh, Zen Yarn Garden, as you know, um, or maybe you don't know. I do use their products a lot. I will um, I, I will note that they do um, pay me to knit samples for them, but I do actually really love their yarns and I have bought some of their yarns on my own and uh, worked up a variety of things. Um, and one of the things that they do is they try to, um, they really love um, art and they have something called the Art Walk series where they uh, dye yarns based on or inspired by uh, famous paintings. Um, and I don't know if this is part of the Art Walk series, but this is called Icelandic Landscape. And um, the stunning photograph by Alan Morgan shows all the beauty and depth of the Icelandic landscape. So this is the photo. It's kind of hard to see. You can see it better if you go to their website. Um, and again, this is Zen Yarn Garden. Um, and it is a really beautiful, half of it is the landscape and it shows like all these different strata of rocks and such in there and then they show the yarns and so this is um one of the yarns and um it is blues and purples and i believe there is some rust in there hiding in that skein and what they have done is they dyed this skein for the icelandic landscape and then they have matched it to some of their semi-solids so this is um ocean let me see this is ocean floor so it's just a nice pale blue and that will go on top of um, so I'll start with this one and then move into this one. And then the other semi-solid that they have matched it with is one called, I think, Espresso. So it's a dark brown. So the shawl will look like this, which I think is going to be lovely. And I wanted to show you these yarns before I caked them up. This is the Zen Yarn Garden Super Fine DK Base. It's 100% superwash merino, 250 yards per skein, um, 100 grams. And it is best meant to be used on a US 4 to 6 needle. I believe I'll be using a size 7 for the shawl um, because that's what it calls for. So, and I think the shawl calls for either 220 or 225 yards a piece, so I will have a little bit left over. Um, but that is what I've got and what's going to be on my needles this week. This should be a fairly quick knit um, because it's knit up in DK weight, um, although it is over 600 yards, so we'll see. So um, that brings me to crocheting. I was just going to show you an update on my blanket. I am almost done with... Um, Okay, well, let's start again. I am working on the Woodland Blanket, and it was a crochet along led by Lucy's Attic in, I believe, early 2018. So I am a couple years behind. Um, but I asked for a kit for Christmas and got one a couple Christmases ago from my mother-in-law. And it has been sitting in my closet patiently waiting. And uh, right before the new year, I got the crochet bug and decided that I wanted to work on it. And um, I am doing the um, color fading version, or the I guess she calls it the color story version. She usually does um, two separate versions um, of the crochet along or of the order of the colors and then she uh, uh, she publishes those in uh, chunks so that you can quote crochet along with her. And so the first chunk of this one was 18 stripes and I think I'm at 16. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 14, 15. So I have three more stripes until I finish this section and then move on to the next section. And here is where I am at so far. 
So I am trying to crochet um, one color stripe, which is technically two rows a day. And um, I am trying to weave in my ends as I go. So a bunch of them have already been woven in. As you can see, I've just got the last couple stripes that I haven't done yet. Um, and so this is going to be a twin size blanket. I am using, I believe it's called Stylecraft DK. Um, and they are in the colors that the are um, prescribed for her blanket. Um, basically, she does a deal um, with a uh, yarn company in the UK where you can buy the kit, and the kit itself is super reasonable. I think it was about 28 pounds, um, which is for Americans probably about between 35 and 40 dollars, maybe maybe 45 before shipping. Um, but that is super super reasonable for. Um, it is 15 skeins and they're 300 yards a piece so that is a lot of that's 4500 yards of yarn and um the pattern as written um will make a uh, twin size blanket or a blanket suitable to fit a twin size bed which is four foot by six foot and then if you want to make it for a if you want to make it bigger than that um you can just buy multiple kits so this is what I'm doing right now and um, I am really enjoying it. It's looking very autumn and woodlandish, and I still have not decided who the recipient of this blanket will be but for now I am just enjoying working on it and I can't wait to go put on a couple more rows. Um, I still have three or four colors left to work into the blanket. I haven't used them all yet although I did add um, mocha this week which was new. So that's what's going on there. Um, I did not work on my Christmas socks this week. Um, if I can finish Roxy socks and get a good start on Miles, I might go back to those. Um, I do have a trip coming up at the end of the month. I will be going to Las Vegas for a, uh, well, it's more than a long weekend. I will be traveling Saturday through Thursday. I'm working a work conference there. Um, but since I will have plane time and evening time, my plan is to take all the socks with me on the trip um, because they are super um, easy and lightweight and portable. Um, so it seems like a good thing to bring with me. Um, let's move to spinning, but first a sip of tea. Okay, I brought back a skein that I sort of showed you last week. It was still on the bobbin. I hadn't wound it off. Um, this was a um, skein from Hummingbird Moon. Um, the fiber was Superwash. I think it was just Merino, but no, it might have been Tarhi. And it was in the colorway Spellbound. And remember I said that it reminded me a little bit of Beach Glass? So here you go. Um, it was a, in the braid, it was a very white braid that had hints of teal and dark blue and purple. Um, and it, the white just absolutely softens it out and um, it looks like beach glass. My guess is I got about 300, 350 yards of a sport weight here and I am thinking about maybe socks. Um, even though it's gorgeous and I could potentially do it for a shawl, um, this is the time of year when it's cold and I start thinking about hand spun socks. So it might be socks. Um, although I do have a couple braids of Corydale that I have spun up for sock yarn. So maybe I'll do that and maybe I'll hold on to this for later. But again, like I said, it reminds me of beach glass. It's got blues and greens and purple um, and it's just absolutely beautiful. Um, I will try and take some photos that will do it justice to share with you. Um, but that was what I finished spinning. So I moved on to a bag of odds and ends from Hedgehog Fibers. She called it Itsy Bitsy Fiber, which I thought was super cute. Um, and what I did, um, so I showed you last week all those little bits and bobs, and then I talked about whether I was going to spin them all together or separately. Um, and the answer is I did a little bit of both. Um, there were three bumps of fiber in there that had this really fabulous, it was like oranges and reds and pinks and purples, and it had like a real autumn color. And um, they also appeared to be either blended or on um, maybe two-tone merino because there is some, um, there was definitely some black in there, um, which made it kind of, or oatmeal, which made it darker and moodier. And so what I did is I spun up the three, um, the three little bumps of this fiber together. Um, and my guess is it's probably an ounce or an ounce and a half. And so I just spun them into singles on a bobbin and um, I will apply that together on itself. And so I will have a mini skein of just that little kind of autumn braid, um, which I like. And actually I have a few other mini skeins of some autumn braids. And so I thought maybe they would go in a nice project together. Um, the other thing I could see is I hope maybe I'll get about a hundred yards out of this. 
maybe we'll keep our fingers crossed um and so i could use it with another color to make some mittens or something else the fiber itself was super soft i have no idea what it is um but it was um really soft and it drafted really nicely it's absolutely beautiful so that is the first part of the spin done and um waiting for me to wind it off so i can ply and what I decided was for the rest of the bag, I decided to go ahead and um, make a big messy sampler skein of all the different colors. And so what I did was I tore everything into little strips of fiber and each day I pull out five or six strips of fiber and um, I spin them. So I am working my way through this bag. All told, total there were 250 grams, which is a little bit of fiber, which is a little bit... Um, more it's about nine almost nine ounces of fiber so I expect this will take me the rest of the week to work on this and hopefully maybe I'll have something to show you um for this for next time um I think that I have decided that um January well that kind of brings me to the next point um, we are having a selfish craft along in January in the corner of Knit and Tea Group on Ravelry. That is because we craft for everyone else during the fall and coming up to holiday season, or maybe you don't, but a lot of us do. And so in January, I like to take some time and relax and do some things that make um, me happy. And I want to share that with you. And so I've turned it into an along. I say craft along because all crafts are welcome. That's crocheting, knitting, sewing, weaving, spinning, dyeing. Um, if it's a craft that makes you happy and you're making something for yourself, go for it. Um, the only rules are it cannot be more than half done. Um, it runs from January 1st through January 31st and it has to be for you. And I think I have decided that my contribution um, is that I'm going to do selfish spinning in January. Um, so often when I spin, I spin now either to um, spin for work or I spin for my shop. Um, so this month I am going to spin some braids that I've been and fibers that I've been holding on to um, that I want to spin for myself that make me happy. So um, this is spin number one in that vein. Actually, well, technically I started this last year, so the, but this was the first finished skein and this one I'm keeping for myself as well. So that is all I have for you today. It has been a slightly short one, but I hope that you enjoyed it. Um, I hope that you're enjoying crafting a cup of tea or coffee or whatever your favorite beverage is and that you are enjoying a lovely day no matter where you are, no matter what the weather is outside. Um, I will see you next time. So until I see you again, I will say as I always do, happy knitting, happy spinning, happy sipping, and I'll see you next time. Bye.